Now, when it comes to the Kaaba, the main point that we try to communicate is the following. In Islam or in the Quran, God teaches that if all mankind and if all the jinn combine to sin and move away from God, then God doesn't lose one Adam's worth of his kingdom. And if mankind and jinn combined to dedicate every second of their life to prayer and to worship of the one God, then God's kingdom doesn't gain one Adam's worth as well. What does this philosophy teach you? It teaches you that God is not in need of you or your practices or your worships or your prayers. You are in need of these practices and these worships. You are in need of God and not the other way around. If you can understand that philosophy, then you can appreciate prayers and what they are meant to do, which is basically enlighten you. So when dealing, for example, with the Kaaba, Muslims are required to go and perform Hajj one time in their life. And it's one of the five pillars of Islam. Growing up, most Muslims accept this and most of them do it without questioning. And this is the essence of belief. And this is great. But at the same time, this doesn't mean that if you question or research, you're gonna come back with negative or bad answers. The opposite is actually true. So when we started researching into the esoteric agendas and we started researching the elite, we found out how much certain type of practices and rituals can affect your lives. So when we went and placed this on Islam, we developed an even deeper respect for this religion and a far deeper respect for God and the Creator of us. So, when you go to the Kaaba and you circle around it seven times, the essence of this worship is not that you are worshipping a stone or that you are worshipping a house or that you are worshipping a Kaaba. The Kaaba is merely the focal point or the centerpiece that all Muslims have to unite and focus their energy and prayers towards in a practice that is actually worshiping God. Now, going in circles counterclockwise does not break you away from time and space. But the fact that the energy of the cow is the strongest energy on earth and it flows counterclockwise by you flowing in correlation with this energy, you are uplifting yourself. You are reaching spiritual levels that you rarely do experience anywhere else on earth. And the fact that you got to do it seven times, and we are taught that there are seven skies or seven samawat or seven spiritual planes, then one can discover that each circle breaks you through a spiritual plane spiritually. So you can reach the ultimate state of wisdom and spirituality. Does this mean that only Muslims can reach this level? Does this mean that if you're not Muslim, you give up or you reject this information? Not at all. In essence, any one of you, regardless of what your faith is, if you are dedicating your worship and your journey to the one and only Creator and not anything created, then you are on a righteous path. To begin with, the significance of 911. What you have to understand, and what we are trying to explain, is that when dealing with extra dimensions, or when dealing with beings from extra dimensions like Jinn, for example, or when dealing with the Illuminati, or the elite, or people that follow a certain type of esoteric agenda, although me and you communicate through words and letters, they have chosen a different type of language. And this is a cross-boundary type of language. This is a language that goes across the boundaries understood by all. And this is the language of numbers and shapes. And this is why whenever you do research about these groups, you'll find out that they practice something called sacred numerology and sacred geometry. What does this mean? It means that each number is given a meaning. Each shape is given a meaning. A meaning is communicated whenever a shape is presented or a number is presented by these specific groups. 
I'm not talking about random people or random groups. We're talking about specific groups that follow this type of agenda. When numbers are used, it signifies a certain type of meaning. When shapes are used, the same is followed. So, in their definition, in a numerological sense, 10 is the Alpha and the Omega, or the God. 11 is a step above God. 101 is a step above God. 911 or 911 is the skipping of God. It is the ultimate challenge. It is going from number 9, which has a specific meaning, to number 11 without going through 10. It's skipping God. So it's no coincidence that this event that we call 911 today took place on 911. It is the ultimate challenge. So now that we understood what 911 means, what other practice do we do that deals with 911? Calling a number whenever you are in an emergency. Now, creating an institution that helps people whenever they are in need of help and whenever they are experiencing an emergency is fine. There's nothing against it. There's, there's no religion, there's no logical person on earth that will tell you this is wrong. But when you understand how sinister that these elite are and the way they work, they work on a level that's way beyond what you think. So the fact that when you're experiencing an emergency or when you are in need of help, you have to pick up a phone and dial 911, which is the ultimate numerological definition of skipping God, then you'll understand how these people work. Something is mutualistic or satanic. 